In my last video, I completely disassembled a Daisy 880, and it left my gun looking like this. Now I'm going to reassemble that gun step by step. I'm going to start on the final piece I disassembled, the exhaust valve. The exhaust valve is comprised of the valve and rod, the body, a spring, a plastic washer, a small o-ring, and the metal clip. The spring goes on the rod, followed by the plastic washer and then the small o-ring. You then stick this through the body and hold it in place by the clip. Pulling the trigger activates this valve, releasing your pumped up pressure and firing your projectile. An o-ring goes between the valve and the body of the gun. To install the valve, just push in and twist it to hold it in. Next, I reassemble the trigger assembly. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole gun. When installing the spring, you can push the trigger forward and it will snap in place, locking the piece together. The trigger assembly is comprised of the trigger, the trigger spring, the sear, and that flat piece of spring steel. I'm not sure what the terminology for it is. I'm going to try and show that a little closer. The flat piece of spring steel has a hole in it, and the trigger has a notch that will go through that hole. Okay, I'm going to jump back to the first time I installed this. It'll take some work to get the holes to line up. It's kind of tricky to get these pieces lined up. When you have everything lined up, you can put the pin in through the body. There is two different styles of pins that hold the trigger assembly in place. One is completely smooth, and one has some notches on one end. The one with notches goes through the trigger. The smooth one goes through the sear.
You want to make sure that piece of flat steel goes through the body the correct way. This is a properly assembled body. And this is improperly assembled. We got to put the o ring for the bottom of the pump tube back on. Then we put the pressure chamber seal assembly back together. It is comprised of the machined abutment washer, the seal itself, the seal spring, and a pin to hold it in. This seal contains the pressure that you pump up. With the seal assembly in place, we can put the pump tube back on. The pump tube has a slit in one end, and that goes down and towards the front. The frame rail just slips in place, riding towards the bottom. The frame rail is held in place by one pin. I'm going to put the pump plunger assembly together next. The pump assembly is comprised of the pump head itself, an o-ring that goes on the pump head, the pump head arm, two washers, the buffer, a plastic washer, and the oil wiper, and it is held together with one roll pin. Although the buffer looks like a giant o-ring, its job is not to seal, but to buffer the pump head and act as a spring as you pump. To get the roll pin in place, you have to compress the buffer. If you're installing a brand new buffer, this can be kind of tricky. Even with an old buffer, you got to push down quite a bit to get the roll pin in place. With the plunger assembly together, we can put it back in the pump tube. At the end of the pump head arm is a hole for a pin to go through. On each end of this pin is a plastic wheel, which will guide the pump plunger assembly. This pin also connects the plunger assembly to the pump handle. When you get everything together and get it slid back into the frame rail, 
the edges of the frame rail will keep it from coming apart. The pump arm is held in place by one pin. Then I put the stock's butt plate and the pistol grip cap back on the butt stock. The buttstock slides into the frame and is later held by screws that go through the side covers. The safety button has a spring and a small ball bearing to hold it in place. To get the safety button in place, you have to compress the ball bearing into the safety button and then slip it into the side cover. To get the bolt in place, you need to stick the bolt thumb handle through the side cover and then attach the bolt. The side covers can be wiggled until they fall into place. The bolt needs to be pulled back when installing the side covers. Don't forget to put the feed door in place on the left hand side cover. I find it is easier to install the pump handle retaining spring after the side covers are in place. Now we're ready to screw on the side covers. There are four different kinds of screws used on the side covers. This big screw is the metal retaining screw for the buttstock. Each rifle has two of these screws. All screws on the 880 are regular right hand threads. 
so it makes no difference if you use the screw on the left hand or the right hand side as long as you have the correct style of screw. The next style screws used on the buttstock are the second longest screw. There are four of these screws on each rifle. The longest screws, these screws go on the top right hand side towards the front and the top left hand side towards the back. Each gun has two of these screws. Before we put the small screws into the side covers, we need to put the barrel cover on. The front sight slips into the barrel cover. The rear sight is a simple notch piece that is screwed on and can be adjusted for windage. To adjust for distance, there's a plastic notched elevator. The barrel cover slips into place and goes behind the two side covers. The barrel is supported by the front sight. With the barrel cover in place, we can go ahead and put the four remaining screws into the side covers. These are the smallest screws. There's two on each side towards the front bottom. Two of these screws go through the barrel cover, holding it in place. Only thing we have left is to put the forearms on. The forearms slip behind the side covers and also have a hook along the top. A solitary screw holds them in place. Okay, it's all back together now.
Let's do a little test run. Good to go. I will also be making some videos on diagnosing and repairing some of the common problems of the Powerline 880. If you need parts for your 880, check out my store on eBay, eBay ID JL Missouri.